Psychiatrists of Reddit, what was the most obvious attempt to fake insanity you've seen? Psychologist, not psychiatrist, but I used to work at the VA as a trauma psychologist. My job had nothing to do with whether people got service connected. That was an entirely different process. That said, a small minority of people thought if they could trick me into doxing them with PTSD, they would be rolling in dough. They would not have been the most blatant version of this was someone who had clearly found the DSM criteria online and tried to parrot it back to me without knowing at all what the symptoms meant. At one point this person told me they have hyper, um, hypervigilance, hypervigilance. When I asked them to give me an example, they looked like a deer in the headlights. I want to stress how small a minority of people this was. Most people I worked with one, really did have PTSD too, were extremely distressed by it and had it affecting their lives immensely and three, wouldn't actually file for service connection because they didn't think they deserved it. I think veterans get a lot of flack for filing spurious claims for service connection. But on my side it was a very very small minority who were trying to pull one over on people. Most of these men and women just wanted to feel better. A resident's face fell quite dramatically when I informed them the attention in ADHD doesn't mean you like attention. As someone with ADHD, always fun when people think that. Not a psychiatrist, but a secretary for a Paish ward at a VA hospital as a college student, who was also trained to be part of the takedown team that is. When a patient gets unruly and non-compliant, we're sent in to safely get them restrained. One day I came into work expecting it to be a normal day. I immediately hear the code over the comm system for the takedown team to come to room 3. Room 3 is the intake room and where all new patients are seen. We arrive in the room to assess the situation and there are fesses spread on the walls, and a man rubbing it all over his chest, completely naked. We manage to get him restrained without too much hassle. And we are all covered in fesses at this point due to him fighting us at first. We get done and him restrained and the doctor on the team asks him. Why did you feel the need to rub fesses all over? His response. I'm homeless. The US govt won't take care of me and I want food and a place to stay. The shelters are full and I knew that I could get at least 72 hours of warmth and food by acting crazy. We gave the man a full 2 week treatment stay instead, and had the VA and DAV come in to get him housing. Literally one of the best patients I've dealt with while working there from that point forward. Even helping to calm other vets down on the floor before we had to do a takedown. It's absolutely atrocious that these veterans feel the only way they can get the help they need is to do something this extreme. Last I heard the guy was doing much better. Dav helped him get a job doing cleanup at construction sites and an apartment of his own. I'm glad he didn't just immediately start with the fesses. Did a psych placement as a student and was in a discharge meeting with this homeless guy. He was brought into the hospital because police had been called as he was threatening to jump off a bridge. He claimed depression and suicidal thoughts, which it was found out not to be. So he said he was hearing voices, which was also not true. Dude was just desperate to have shelter and food. Sad case. Had a mother come in and insist that her child had silver Russell syndrome. You can go read on it. It's not that easy to fake, as it's a bunch of metabolic conditions mixed with congenital abnormalities. The kid was small, but not that small, around 6th percentile. He didn't wait much, 5th percentile. All of this, with a right arm length 2 centimeters more than the left side, were borderline criteria for Silver Russell. Did genetic testing, which came back negative, but 30% of cases are negative. So the deciding factor was one of the soft criteria of hypoglycemia. Once she heard about this, she printed out 30-40 articles on the disease, she came back with the kid in a coma. But when the kid was in the hospital, he was never hypoglycemic. He went home, and came back in a coma a few weeks later. Again, as soon as he was eating normally at the hospital, he was never hypoglycemic. She starved her child into comas repeatedly for the diagnosis of Silver Russell. She was also a boogan. People who live off welfare and make a game out of it. By the way, she was in a wheelchair when at the hospital. Once I had enough of her balls and walked into the room after only knocking once. She was walking around normally and jumped into the wheelchair as soon as she saw me. I believe it was for money since in Canada Quebec. You get money when your child has a genetic disability. God, if it was legal, I would have slapped some sense into that bee.
WTF starving her child to multiple comas just for some benefits. Read the psychopath test by John Ronson. It mentions a real example of someone like one flew over the cuckoo's nest they pretend to be a psychopath to get an easy ride, but that's the method a psychopath. If you're into podcasts, he did an episode of the psychopath test for this American life. <laughs> Patient who yelled, I'm having a seizure while shaking all limbs uncontrollably because we were pretty sure the lingering guy didn't meet criteria for admission. Still makes me chuckle. LOL. This reminds me of a client that would fake them often. If she didn't like what you were saying or what was going on she would slowly lower herself to the floor saying thanks a lot. I'm gonna have a seizure now followed by her fake seizing while complaining until she got too tired. I had a lady who lou owed attention. She thought she was crazy and had dissociative identity disorder. Think the movie split. Actually, now that I think about it, I saw her around the time that movie came out. She claimed to have many different personalities. One of them where she regresses into a 10 year old boy named Billy. Anyways, this lady started screaming, tantruming, throwing herself on the floor. Nurses were trying to control her without giving too much attention and feeding into it. She then saw the medical student and the patient told him tell Dr. Macaroni and sneeze at Billy is out now she said this incredibly clear and concise. Not in a whining 10 year old tone she was switching in and out of. I was very confused by her comment until I read your username. Psych nurse back in the 90s multiple personality disorder was all the rage. And not true. I would regularly treat people. Some of whom claimed 100 plus personalities lol. Yes. It was trendy in the 90s. If you were convincing enough, you could find your way onto an all expense paid vacay to be on Springer or Sally Jesse or Mori or any of the other dozen trashy daytime talk shows from that time. Sorry for tangent but has anyone else heard someone say I my mother my friend was diagnosed as clinically insane? I used to hear it all the time in high school. It was trendy. I remember talking to a guy in my year about how I thought I might have bipolar and he was like don't joke about that stuff. I'm literally clinically insane. Sometimes I go stand in the square in the middle of the city and just scream at the sky. I worked as an on-call crisis worker in a community hospital responding mostly to a calls. A chronic patient with a borderline personality disorder diagnosis presented with behavior that did not warrant an inpatient hospitalization, despite wanting it. When I was getting his discharge instructions together, he left the exam room he was in and found a cleaning cart and sipped some cleaning solution. I walked into the room and I could smell it and asked what the smell was and he very nonchalantly pointed to the cart and said he didn't know what it was. He drank something off the cart. I think he swished and spit it out, but he got his wish. I was placed on a psychiatric hold after an attempted suicide brought on by medication I had been placed on. Frick you Paxil. Anyway the first night there was a woman in my room who was there for some court related evaluation. She got up in the middle of the night and pee all over the floor then smeared a wall in period blood. I overheard her telling another patient there was no way she was going back to jail again. It was freaking disgusting. Paxil is the frickin devil. Psychiatric resident here. A lot of patients threaten with suicide just to get admitted or to get more pills. There's also the other way around. Sometimes patients, usually admitted with a manic or psychotic episode, can tell you crazy stories that seem to be part of the illness, but turn out to be, partially, true. Not a psychiatrist, but an Asian's Melpdo ones are hilariously and disturbingly fake. This man really thinks he's the joker. Not a psychiatrist but genuinely insane, when unmedicated. I think where people go wrong faking madness is how big they go with it. I have bipolar and during mania I come across basically the same as always. Bit more energy, much more interest in sex, drugs, being awake. I think the government have my flat bugged and someone invisible keeps breathing into my ear but other than that we good let's do shots. Insanity rarely looks like it does in movies. I also have bipolar 2 and I am constantly plagued with the thought that I could be faking or manipulating others. When I was a teenager I was admitted to an inpatient facility and my mom told all the doctors and nurses I was faking for attention and I'm just manipulative. It's stuck with me ever since. 
I've got a laundry list of issues and for the longest time I refused to go get tested for fear of being committed but more so because I was worried the psychiatrist was going to think I was faking and for some reason that scared me the most. Back in Korea, there was a guy in my mash unit who was always trying to get sent home with a section 8. He was a draftee, but most of us were and no one went to the lengths he did. Mostly he would just cross dress as a woman but he would try other things too, like pretending to be a Cleopatra, or a traveling salesman, or just a normal civilian. RCO never bought it, I guess he kept him around for company morale or something. Eventually he kind of gave up after he got promoted to company clerk but he still had all those dresses up until the end of the war. They should make a show about something like that. Maybe not focusing on that guy, but maybe have him as a side character. This guy uked up a horse and an ox to a plow and was using them to sow salt on a beach. Was easy enough to prove he was faking it he swerved the plow out the way when his baby son was placed in danger of being trampled. Crazy man, murder this baby and we will take you seriously. One time when I was being admitted to a psych ward in the 8th grade there was an older man that obviously had mental issues as he literally lit himself on fire, which is why he was there. He looked at me and said watch this, man is full on screaming and faking a seizure, making his spit bubble and come out of his mouth. The cops and fire department were there in an instant and he was taken to the hospital. I've heard that patients do that because they can walk out of the hospital and go back to normal. I work in hospital security. I have seen countless attempts at faking illness injury psychological and otherwise. Suicidal idealizations and vague pain in various parts of the body are usually the go-to methods for drug shelter seeking types. This is not to discount the people that have genuine problems as I have also seen plenty of those. There are plenty of people who are frequent flyers who abuse the EMS medical system constantly for one reason or another. If you know anybody that works in EMS or emergency room personnel ask them. I promise you will probably be able to name a couple off the top of their heads. That being said, I am not medical personnel. I am not the one who has to make the decision of who is lying or who isn't. There are plenty of cases that anybody with two bits of common sense can see are ploys for drugs shelter. However it is frequently way more complicated than that. I do not envy the social workers and doctors who ultimately have to make these decisions. How do I know I'm not faking? I've been diagnosed with bipolar 2 and have attempted suicide twice, once resulting in being forced into inpatient care. A lot of times I feel like I'm faking for attention or something. Even typing this out I kind of feel like it. That's kind of the problem with these threads. Some doctors have a huge tendency to label symptoms as being fake or psychosomatic, which they'll treat as a synonym for not real instead of its actual meaning of a real symptom that is brought on neurologically psychologically. This makes it extremely hard for some patients to get a proper diagnosis because their problems aren't directly visible. Came in with his underpants on his head, pencils up his nose, proclaimed to be named Wobble. From London, a small village on Mars just outside the capital city, Wobble, and that 2 plus 2 was Wibble Wobble. Ah. I see you're veteran of the Sudan. Not a psychiatrist but I think this fits. A guy I served with tried to get out of conscription by showing up on enrollment day dressed in a purple kilt and marching around with a plunger as a prop rifle. He even had a plunger tattooed on his arm. He was told to loose the kilt, but he kept the plunger for some weeks before he gave up. He turned out to be quite a good soldier. Would trying to fake insanity make you insane? I mean say you do fake it well enough. Now you're in the insane asylum with real insane people with no way out, because you've been deemed insane. You're on pills you don't need, no one believes you are not insane. Now what? I've said it before somewhere else. Had a patient show up at the end of each month when they would waste their benefits they would receive. Would go to the mainer and claim they are suicidal and be placed with us on the inpatient unit. Would come in, and say three hots and a cot. Had one patient that was a major drug user. Probably had some brain cells fried but 90% there in the head. One day decided to have sex with another patient that was fertile. We asked why. Did it to do it I always wanted to have kids. I have a lot of fricked up stories from that place. Dang half the time they don't even admit patients who are actually suicidal. 
my friend who worked in the psychiatric ward at a hospital. One day he was called in to deal with someone who was mentally unfit to be with others. He comes in, finds a 50 year old woman running naked through the hallways with security guards chasing her. He tried calming her down. She started yelling at him saying, I wanted my meds, but they wouldn't give him. Now I'm gonna give him some titty. She then starts shaking her chest at him. She was quite endowed. I mean some serious honkers. A real set of badonkers. Anyway I'm getting off topic. She gets taken into a special padded room. She was then given her meds and promptly let go. Her mental file said she was mentally competent. Turns out her meds, the ones she had been raving about, she hadn't been taking but was selling. $25 per pill I believe. And this act was her way to get more. Running through the hallways at a hospital with no clothes on. Swinging her massive dob and honkers and not harming a single person in the process of being manhandled by security. Just your average day I guess. What I've always wondered is that if a person would try to fake insanity, then he is surely mentally ill because no normal person would do so. Sometimes it's because they need food or shelter, or just that they want the pills. Therapist here, but this is going on a personal level and one of the few reasons I got in this field. Stepmother faking having DID, after watching how people act and react around them. She's a narcastic style with zero empathy and loves to play any card to give her the right spotlight. But that's one of the few I am willing to talk about. Not psychiatrist. A YouTuber Trisha Paytas lies about having did. Dissociative identity disorder. God I never wanted to click off a video this fast. Spreads wrong information on an already stigmatized illness and she also mocks people within the community and trying to prove she has did eats a bite of a burger then days it needs to be heated and when she gets it out she say who ate a bite out of it. Like 2 seconds before eating it she says omg you guys let me have another bite after taking it out of the microwave. She also uploaded the same video title to two different videos of her eating a burger luck with the same title. Reviewing Chick fil A. With different setups to prove it was a different altar. Met much of this is very off base. First. Insanity is a legal term to indicate someone who has been found not criminally responsible for their actions as a result of mental disease or defect, depending on the jurisdiction's legal standard. Someone here mentioned a case of someone faking being a psychopath for some sort of secondary gain. This may actually be the worst thing to do, as one, being labeled a psychopath can result in a variety of poor outcomes including losses of liberty, sentencing enhancements, etc. It's actually not even a DSM diagnosis. Also, faking is typically referred to as malingering, when secondary gain is identified, or feigning, when the gain is not identifiable but there is suspicion of exaggerating symptoms. There is a misconception that anyone faking is bad or a psychopath. However, the most commonly accepted model of malingering is the adaptational model. In short, People exaggerate symptoms because they are faced with a problem and need to solve it, might be a place to stay, lying low in the hospital as opposed to jail, or trying to get access to drugs they want. Lastly, not every psychiatrist or psychologist is trained in this. This type of work is considered under the umbrella of forensic psychology psychiatry. It really isn't sexy work either. Think of it as less meeting with Hannibal Lecter and more, reviewing 2000 pages of discovery records and being happy when stuff comes in PDF format. Source, do this for a living. Not a psychiatrist but when I was in the waiting room waiting to get called back to have my appointment start I heard screaming and the girl who was in the room ran out and started screaming what do you mean I can't be prescribed Xanax. Since I don't have anxiety, she then started staring at things and claiming everything made her feel uneasy, she looked like she was 10. I mean everyone gets anxiety sometimes but not everyone needs meds for it. I think this thread shows the lack of resources for homeless people and veterans. Acting crazy just to have shelter and food for a short period. Sad world we live in. Not really answering the question, but I've been an inpatient in psych wards a few times. My first time I was sent home because I was faking. The doctor, old white man, told that I was just a regular teen having fun. I was a suicidal alcoholic who had just survived an attempt two days prior. I had the return the next day and be assessed by a different psychiatrist who ended up making me stay in the hospital for months. 
The first doctor I saw didn't get any punishment. I could have died. Obviously this is an isolated incident, but even if you doubt the person is lying please still treat them with respect. I am not a psychiatrist. Sorry for my bad English I actually speak French Lmao. I'm 16 yeah I'm just a teenager but WTV. And I've been sent to an hospital many times 1 years ago. I got problems since my childhood. Sometimes it was not that bad. Other times it was. My family always said that I'm like a roller coaster. Haha. <laughs> I'm interested in body mod. Art. And in many other things because I love to learn more and more on various subjects. Especially the human being. Whether it's his body or inside his head. Besides, it's practically the only thing I draw. Sometimes time was hard. Really hard and dark. My family had problems too. Depression and anxiety most. It started to get worse when I was 9 years old. I had started to do a lot of nonsense which I self mutilated. My 14 was horrible and that's why I've been hospitalized and all of those things. Doctors told me that I was borderline. They informed me that it might not be for life. That's why they really diagnose personality disorders from adulthood. And maybe that there might be a little bit of autism in all of that. My mother removed me from this hospital but I was then placed in another one that's why I didn't get the answer if I was autistic or not. I stayed at this new hospital for more than two weeks. They were saying the same things as the other place. Autism. BPD and all of this crap. But they refused to make any diagnosis out of fear that I was faking all of that. Despite my suicide attempts and all my pain. And it hurt me lol I felt really alone and problematic. They said that it was because I was interested in psychology and knew some information on the subject. So I didn't have any help. But why would I do that I don't understand? They only gave me some antidepressants and left me alone with my mom and I was glad I left. But now that I'm not better I realize that it was not cool at all. I was not trying to fake insanity I didn't even want it to be there. The police just forced me to go. The worst feeling is knowing that there's something actually mentally wrong with you but being too scared to say anything because you know that you're going to sound like one of the people being described on here. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.